Thank you very much for the kind introduction as introduced. My name is Yang Pi Li. Um, you might be wondering what what Jim Core is and what is uh, related or high related into the uh, biopharmaceutical development. We are based on the uh, CARS nine, uh, the gene editing technology. And I have been working for that company, for this company, for a year. But before that, I worked for the Samsung Bio Apis and other companies developing the biosimilar, particularly on the CMC area. When it comes to the ICH guideline, as the previous speaker presented, actually there are many details in the guideline per se. So for my time, I will talk about how we apply analytical procedures, particularly to the biopharmaceutical development. This is the table of contents. So starting from why analytical methods are important for the biopharmaceutical development. So when it comes to the CMC development, the overall goal is to develop a reliable, robust and reproducible process so that we can manufacture a product that is safe to administer to human. And what we talk about the steps of the development, there is upstream and downstream development, and of course there is a scale up GMP production, and also formulation at the finished product level and fill and finish. So when it comes to the process development, actually the CMC is always behind the background and the analytical method is really important for the CMC. So. Starting from the early development, characterization, and finally, the release of the product into the market. During that process, the selective, sensitive, and reproducible testing method need to be applied. And analytical method after development need to be validated. And sometimes, depending on the case, the analytical method needs to be transferred. And the science is really important for the analytical method development. So the CMC element can be categorized into uh, roughly three. First one is the qualification of components. And as for the biopharmaceuticals, the cell is really important component, cell banks and the components like raw materials to culture cells. These are the critical components for the biopharmaceuticals. And the second would be the process, including process design, control, and change control. And these are the important components. And third would be testing. And here the testing includes or it covers DS and DP. In process testing or IPC, release testing, stability testings, these are very important. In drug development process, this is the flow of the analytical process or actually the development of the drug starts from discovery and uh, move to the preclinical, clinical trials, review approval, and post approval. And through this uh, process, analytical procedure or the process starts from the very early stage. So analytical procedures need to be developed from the very early stage and then uh, qualified, validated, then should be included into the package for the approval. Then the life cycle management for the analytical method need to be implemented. Here, I want to stress that what we talk about the drug development, we usually focus on the process. However, behind the process, there is the analytical method and the uh, strong and robust development of analytical method is really important. Um, for the ICH guidelines, I am sharing the bio uh, manufacturing process in link with the ICH guidelines, cell line development, cell banks, DS 
production, DP production, and as well as medical device. For example, prefill syringe or auto injectors because they can be used for the filling. And here on the right side, you can see the mapped ICH guidelines. For the analytical procedure development, Q2 and Q14 are very much related. The cell line development from that area to the end of the process, actually these guidelines are all important. In analytical method, there are some types and uh, there are some applications of the analytical method. So if you look at this slide, there are different analytical uh, techniques like chromatographic method. Um, HPLC would be the most widely used one. Assay HPLC, ion exchange, hydrophobic interaction, HPLCs are widely used. And spectrophotometric method, we can see UV visible. More recently, we can see CD, MMR. These technologies are more uh, being used for the biopharmaceuticals. Capillary electrophoresis uh, includes isoelectric uh, focusing CES and particle size analysis for the biopharmaceuticals. We analyze uh, aggregate with SEC, DLS, and DSC, HDAC. So these technologies can be adopted. And for the biologicals, there are biological methods that should be used which includes ELISA, SPR, or cell-based assays. In CMC, these analytical methods are applied to different domains, for example, characterization or product release testing, stability testing, raw material testing, in-process testing, and also for the clinical trials, actually there is a need for the clinical bioanalysis to be implemented. As we develop drugs, sometimes people are confused about the relationship of different domains of the drug development like characterization, release testing, and stability testing, and others. The area or the domain where the wide range of the uh, analytical methods are used is the characterization. And the um, analytical method used for the characterization are many and diverse, and some of them can be used for the criticality assessment to test the quality attribute, the critical quality attributes. So these will be used for the QC release testing. And of the QC release testing, there are uh, items that indicate stability, and these are for the stability testing. So you can see the relationship between these different domains. At the same time, for the IPC or the in-process testing, QC release testing and characterization, and the analytical method used for those domains are also used for the AP, IPC, but at the same time, ELN and virus, adventurous uh, virus or the additives are not for the final products. So for these items, we do need to have a separate IPC method. And there is a raw material testing, which is alongside with the uh, product which is represented as a separate circle here. For QBD, um, there are um, some of the issues um, are related to the application of the QBD. As we have um, new or revised guidelines, we are required to achieve higher level of the quality and the QBD is actually one driver behind uh, that quality requirement. I believe that you already understand the QBD. Basically, it requires product understanding, process understanding, and also the control strategy and uh, management need to be established. 
for the control strategy, testing is critical. Here you can see in process testing, specification for release, characterization testing, and process monitoring. So the analytical method for these different types of testings need to be established. And starting from the early stage of the development of the process, the criticality of the attribute need to be assessed so that we can select this or determine the CQA. Then the, uh, the analytical method need to be developed and validated and should be ready for application. Um, this is a, an example of the monoclonal antibody. What kind of the test method are being used for the characterization of this type of a, a product? About 35 test methods are listed on this uh, slide, and of course there will be more if we uh, delve into the details of each test method. Biosimilar characterization for uh, MAB was something that I have done when I worked for the BioAppis. Uh, we utilize about 60 or 70 test method, structurally, primary structure, secondary structure, high order structure are uh, analyzed and glycosylation, for example, the, uh, the protein need to be analyzed and of course the physical chemical method, aggregation and product variant which includes size or charge and oxidation need the test method and for the biological activity, for example, antibody fat function binding assay, cell-based assays are basically needed and FC function, if there is uh, FC function, then the binding assay for that and cell-based assay are required. Then what about QC release and stability study, the test method for those domains? These are the typical test methods uh, that are being used for the QC release and stability studies. The general are actually general. Identity, quantity, biological activity, purity, impurity, safety. And for the test items, you can see uh, the items that we can easily see e from the quality attribute, the critical quality, criticality is assessed and although it may not have the highest criticality, but still some quality attributes need to be included into the CQA as an CQA like appearance, pH, osmolality, experience content. So these are the routine CQAs to be included and adventitious agent and DP specific, which includes a visible particle, visible particle, extractable volume and sterility. For in-process testing method, it is not the finished product so here, cell viability, cell density are tested and the IPC is to monitor the process. So process related impurities, host cell protein, host cell DNA, resin, membrane, is regiates. And if there is additive, then the additive analysis. And also the virus clearance testing and microplasma testing. For DP, IPC includes stabilizer experience if it is added, then the uh, that need to be tested. And the same is true for the surfactant. The next is the analytical method development. And I think this has been well explained in the previous uh, presentation, so I will uh, just touch upon the, uh, the overviews. The goal of the analytical method development is to 
obtain an analytical procedure fit for the intended purpose. Specificity, accuracy, precision should, achieved, should be achieved at the level that we need. And if we do have the platform procedures and when we follow it, then some part of the analytical method development can be abbreviated or the streamlined because we are following the platform procedure. And of the validation item, the robustness has been very much highlighted. So the data, the robustness data from the design of the experiment also need to be well uh, developed. Then why the analytical method development is such an important uh, thing to do? Among others, the quality of the product can be assured with a good analytical method and the data need to be generated to support the quality of the product and that data can be generated by the analytical method. And of course, this is required by the regulatory authority, which is related to the approval. And not only that, the data from the analysis is critical and vital to ensure the safety for the patients and prove that there is an efficacy for the treatment. This is the schema of the method development steps starting from 1 to 12 steps. We need to build the understanding of the sample and at the end of the process, the method needs to be validated. In all of these steps, ICH guideline Q14 encompass the first or the early part of these steps. For example, the understanding the sample means that at what matrix, concentration, quantity, and physical chemical characteristics of the samples need to be defined before we develop the method. And the goal of the method need to be clearly defined whether it is the identification, impurity, or a safe or potency. So depending on the goal of the method, then the items for the validation would be uh, different. So these need to be well uh, defined in the beginning of the method development. The ICH guideline described a minimal approach in the past, but with the Q14, we have the enhanced approach. So we implement minimal approach and also the enhanced approach, uh, which includes evaluation of the sample properties and define the ATP and conducting risk assessment and also performing DOE, the multivariate experiment, and also conducting validation and doing the life cycle management. So this is the more new trend. And table of contents in the company's SOP, I believe they will be well established. And this is the example uh, provided by the FDA. The next is the method validation. The method validation, the definition is well stated in the ICHQ2 and also the CFR of the US FDA and also the USP. So the, the definition of different uh, document actually uh, describe the same concept, which means the method need to be validated to show that it is suitable for its intended purpose. So the purpose of method validation is to identify the potential error or the sources of the potential errors and understand the variables or the variation in the potential errors. And also determine whether the method is acceptable for intended use and for the approval 
to make the decisions, the method need to be proved, proven uh, to be useful and the regulatory requirement, whether it is, it can be say, satisfied or not. These things are validated through the method validation. There are different terms uh, which are not the method validation. Calibration, system suitability, method qualification, and method validation. The calibration here, I think you know quite well. So it is for the individual system components, whether these individual system components can properly function or not. And system suitability is more about samples, not the actual product. It, this is to test and to verify the proper functioning of the operating system. And for the method qualification and validation, if I compare them, sometimes these two concepts are interchangeably used, but if we uh, classify them, the method qualification has the minimized items. And also, there is no predefined criteria for method qualification. For method validation, There are predefined performance criteria, and the validation is conducted to see if those criteria are met or not. So that's what method validation is about. And also, compared to the qualification, robustness is also covered more widely with the method validation. In order to conduct the method validation, we do have to have the calibrated and qualified instruments and we have to have established SOP. And reference standards need to be ready. And of course, the analysts need to be qualified. And the validation protocol need to be prepared. For the qualification of instruments, IQOQ need to be conducted. Maintenance schedule, of course, should be included in the qualification of instrument. And also, the reference standard need to be prepared, as I said. Usually, what we develop new molecule or the new product, activities are starting from lab research. So, there would be the laboratory standard. Then it can be scaled up or for the initial GMP production stage. There will be the reference standard, which is internal reference standard. And once the, it is fully characterized, then it can be uh, called as primary reference standard. And here, this primary reference standard need to be maintained and kept permanently. An in-house working standard scan dot is prepared, then calibrated against the primary reference standard. The primary reference standard, whenever possible, need to be maintained and kept permanently, while the working standard reference working reference standard is being used. And of course, if it's not a new drug or new product, then international reference standard can be utilized and the working reference standard is established, uh, being ca calibrated against the international reference standard. For the validation protocol, these are the things that need to be uh, included into the validation protocol and the extent of the validation. For new method, full and complete validation is required for the pharmacopoeia method, the partial validation, or to be more precise, uh, the, re uh, the verification need to be conducted. And if there is any changes to the method itself, then those uh, changes need to be partially revalidated. For example, there is a change to the equipment or the formula is changed. 
or critical reagents suppliers are changed. If that is the case, then the uh, the partial revalidation need to be conducted. And I think this was discussed during the previous presentation. Now we have the ICHQ two R two. So the colored area here is kind of a new or updated concept. In the previous version of the guideline on the left side, we call them as the validation parameter. But now performance characteristics are is the term to be used. And depending on the purpose of the test, like in identity, purity, impurity, or content uh, potency, depending on that, the validation items would be different and the flow need to be followed. And one more area that we need to pay attention is the transfer of the analytical method, whether it is in-house or not. I mean, the in-house test method or the analytical method can be transferred to the CMO1 or from CMO1 to CMO2. So that happens quite often. And the transfer of the analytical method need to be conducted in the GMP environment, which means it should require a protocol and the relevant procedure. If we do not pay attention to this part, then when we transfer from A laboratory to, to uh, a laboratory B, and uh, if we experience some changes to the data, then it's really difficult for us to explain it. So the transfer of the analytical method is really important. For the analytical method transfer, the receiving lab may not have to do the full validation. Of the validation items, the key items will be covered by the receiving uh, lab, which usually focus on precision, accuracy, and ruggedness. And I also want to talk about the submission. The analytical method related information need to be included into the CTD. And of the CTD sections, there are certain areas or the sections where this analytical procedure and data need to be included. This is the CTD structure. I think you know it quite well. And from the quality area, S for the drug substance, P is for the drug product. For analytical procedures, S.4.2, P.5.2. Two, S.4.3, P.5.3. The yellow boxes are for the analytical method description. And below that, here, the second yellow box is for the validation. So here, these two boxes, the two sections are the related ones to the analytical procedure. So the analytical procedures are described here, but the data is provided in the 3.1 and 3.2. Here, of course, while we are including the data, but at the same time, the analytical procedure and the qualification or but the validation status of the analytical method need to be stated too. And in protest testing, raw material testing, as you can see from the white box below the yellow one, the data and the description of the analytical method used need to be included. The same is true for the stability testing. For characterization, here you can see the overview of the characterization in the CTD. What batches were characterized? The batches, the list of the batches need to be provided, as you can see from this table. And in order to do the characterization, we need to have the reference uh, materials. So these materials or the references were uh, described here. And depending on the different method, the quality attributes uh, need to be well described. This is an example of the Adalimumab, which is a Humira. There is an original company and also the biosimilar company. My knowledge is that about like more than 10 companies are already approved by the FDA for the Adalimumab 
biosimilar. This is the MAB and also fat function, NFC function, and uh, the uh, protein and binding. So these are the uh, the analytical methods that are being used for the andalimumab. About 24 analytical methods are being used. And as for the biological method, you can see about 15 methods are being used for this product. So glycosylation and FC function for the antibody product. These might be the test items that we may have to apply. For the specifications, which is included for the section 4.1, quality attributes, and of that, the criticality, a high criticality uh, test items are used for the QC and release testing. And here, test method, acceptance criteria, in terms of release, and also in terms of stability, acceptance criteria need to be set. And analytical procedures, the description in the S.4.2 need to be referenced here. For the DP release and stability, the colored one are the test items or the analytical method that are not in the DS but related to the DP. And for the section 4.2, there is in a there should be the description of the analytical procedure. Here is an example. The analytical method need to be listed and identify the subsections for each individual test method description. So here, the individual descriptions are being done. SOP can be attached or the method description, the SOP can be a part of the main body of the CTD. There is a typo. This is not 4.2, it's 4.3. Here, we include the validation of the uh, analytical procedures. The validation status of the method need to be provided to show the overview of the old monolithical method and their validation status. You can see uh, the, whether it is a compendier or non-compendier. There is a different uh, category than the use or the intention, the purpose of this uh, procedure. And the next column shows verification or vali uh, validation status. And the section for validation results. So here, the subsection is referenced here. And the table below it shows the validation parameters for individual test item or the, the analytical procedure. And validation of analytical procedure for each analytical uh, procedure, the summary should be provided like this table. Here you can see the example of SEHPLC, the validation parameters, specificity, starting from the specificity, you can see linearity, precision, accuracy, and others. Acceptance criteria need to be provided with the result. And for the biosay, you can see cell-based assay as an example. The same table is provided to show the validation parameter, acceptance criteria, and the result. And the validation result need to be provided as a description following this table. This be the, uh, the last slide of my presentation. ICHQ2 revision 2 has annex. And so if you look at the annex, you can see the illustrative examples for the analytical uh, techniques, performance characteristics, and also the how these test techniques can be performed. So these things are well described in the annex of the ICHQ2 revision 2. I think that would wrap up my presentation. Thank you.